be able to make the top four. And he's going to be going against a brew here. I guess they're both brews, if we're being honest. And green, white, hardened scales. So take a look at round number one this morning. All right, so Sam Black, yeah, the resume speaking for himself from the Madison area. A top four finish at Worlds, as you mentioned, but that goes with just a lot of the other things he's pulled off. This deck piloted by him, originally by Craig Wesco, and then by him has had a lot of success. Now, the Green White Hard Scales deck from Andrew Rollbers, if you actually know your history, this was originally designed by Ken Yukihiro. He played it at Pro Tour Magic Origins to actually a very good finish. You see him leading off on turn one Hard and Scales. We'll see the other plays with it, but this card is legitimately powerful in this deck. He's letting it be known exactly what he's up to on turn one, playing Hard and Scales. So Sam has a Soldier of the Pantheon on turn two. Wolbers with a Temple of Plenty, and now he'll play another copy of Hard and Scales. So, Let's see All what right. this deck can do. All right, so talk about some of the big payoffs for hardened scales here. The thing, first of all, you have Hangerback Walker. That's going to be a 3-3 three, three if he just makes it on two mana. Um, other cards that use this, Mana Gorger Hydra, okay. whenever spells cast now, would get three 1-1 one, one counters. Okay. Servant to the Scale, he's kind of like the arc-bound worker of 1-1 one, one counters. He comes into play with a counter and he gives them to another creature when he dies. Well, that gets extra counters when he casts it and when it dies. So okay. just playing it for one mana, it'll end up making five counters. Uh, Dramoka's Command works here. He also has Ajani, Mentor of Heroes. So there are a lot of big payoffs. With Double Hardened Scales, some of these cards can be truly terrifying. Now, there's an Avatar of the Resolute. Yeah. If you look at the text on this, this would be a card, if he just had a Servant to the Scale, that would have been excellent, but it's just a 3-2 because he had no other creatures in play. So nothing exciting to really start off here yet for Wolbers, as far as plus one, plus one counters are concerned. Black is going to follow up with an Archangel of Ties, and now I think this might be a problem here for Wolbers because Though what his deck is doing is pretty unique and cool, uh, one thing it really lacks is the ability to get a card like Archangel Ties off the table. He has next to no removal. It's exactly what you're talking about. He has two copies of Valorous Stance in the main, but that's it when it comes to killing creatures. He's on the green plan of just trying to bowl over creatures. Now, that said, <laughs> before I say there's no removal, Dromoka's command with two hardened scales in play is quite the beating. It's pretty good here because that's going to be not one plus one plus one counter, but actually three, able to win the fight there, take care of the Archangel, come into the red zone here with the Avatar. Yeah, so that's first. So three one one counters and fighting, that's quite the Dromoka's command. You know, yes. has a six five trample reach. Not a bad turn. No, and so many cards are powered up by this double enchantment. Now, the, the, the question you have to ask yourself with a deck like Hardened Scales is does the deck work okay without Hardened Scales? Is the deck only good if you play it on turn number one? Uh, it certainly is better. I mean, a card like Servant of the Scale is not a good magic card if you're, not, if you're playing it fairly. This is a 1-1-for-1 one, one one that donates a counter. It's an Arcbound Worker, but we're not playing Affinity here. Yeah. We're trying to do something else. It involves Hardened Scales. Now, here's a Banishing Light. That's going to take care of the Avatar. And Black Salt will be another copy of Soldier of the Pantheon. He'll pass the turn back. He's kind of chipping away here at Walbers with the two ones. He is chipping away. I think some of the dangers on Sam's side is just how big each of Wolbers' plays is going to be thanks to this double enchantment. I mean, one hangerback walker here is already a problem. Now, on Sam's side, I think he's got some room to work with. Wolbers played a fifth land and didn't have any creatures. Yeah, he needs for Wolbers not to do anything insane. I mean, you mentioned hangerback walker, and I think that'd be a huge problem here for Sam. He just has to pass the turn back after attacking there for four with Soldier of the Pantheons. Yeah. See if Wolbers can find something to do on this turn outside of playing that planes. Not to mention, so not only would Hangerback come down with two additional counters, but every time you tapped it, it would get three 1-1 one, one counters. Yeah, pretty good. But he doesn't have one of those right now. He's taking four more yet again from Soldier of the Pantheons. Black is just playing lands, attacking, and passing the turn back, so he's not doing anything exciting. Wolbers isn't doing anything exciting. He does have, I believe, a Servant of the Scale here. Yeah. And this, to me, speaks to just how powerful Wolbers thinks Hardened Scales is in this strategy. It looks like the hand he kept was two Hardened Scales and not much else, maybe one 3-2, but... It's be, you know, to be able to keep a hand like that is really an endorsement of saying that, hey, Hardened Scales is so good in my deck that my openings with two of them are far and away what I'm looking for. I'm willing to keep it with nearly nothing. Well, Banishing Light is helping Sam get the job done here. That's going to take care of the Servant of the Scale and attack here for four yet again. Walbert's going to fall down to three. He's got wow. nothing to stop the onslaught here from Black. So Sam Black is going to win game number one here over Andrew Walbert's Mono White Devotion up a game over Green White Hardened Scales, which means we're going to get ready for game number two, and we'll take a look at Walbert's sideboard, which you have in front of you. I imagine there are some cards that put some counters on some things. I mean, there's a lot of things like that in the sideboard. So this is actually interesting. That game, to me, seems to be very atypical of how we would expect this to play out. Sam only has three copies of Banishing Light in his deck with three Valor Stands. He's not removal heavy. So this idea that he can just kill all of Wolbers' creatures, while it worked there, I don't expect to see it continue to happen. 
So looking at Wolbers as sideboard, okay, there are some easy ones here. Glare of Heresy obviously seems great against a mono white deck. Can't imagine he wouldn't use something like that. Um, other cards he has, he has a copy of Elspeth's Sons Champion, which is pretty reasonable against a mono white deck. He has also two Tragic Arrogance. So if he wants to go bigger like that, I could definitely see him working for that approach. What I would be worried about out of the Green White Hardened Scales deck are Sam's copies of Elspeth's Sons Champion. Whether or not they're in the main or in the sideboard, I expect to be facing off against that Planeswalker. And against a green deck with little removal, she is quite the threat. On black side, three copies of Celestial Fair, two Surge of Righteousness, two Secure the Waste, the Last Breath. You mentioned Elspeth, two in the board, two Glare of Heresy, a Master of the Unseen, a Tragic Arrogance, and a Banishing Light. Banishing Light was great in that game, so I imagine the fourth one will be in here. Yeah, well, what we're seeing is that the Green Light Harden Scales deck does a really good job of investing a lot of resources into one creature. You saw there an Avatar of the Resolute quickly become a 6-5. One for one removal, I think is pretty, is well positioned to deal with that. So you're right, another Banishing Light's good. Three copies of Celestial Flare is not unreasonable here. And I expect those Elspeths, of course, will be excellent. Andrew's creatures are large, most of them don't have evasion. Uh, Elspeth will do a great job of blocking them and destroying them. Well, those are the options there for both players. Walbers will be on the play here for game number two, so we'll get to see if he can get some action going with the Hardened Scales deck. But in the meantime, we will talk about game night here with Star City Games, a very popular promotion. Thanks to you guys at home for playing in it. We've got, of course, the Kraken, or the Kraken, right? We can say it either way. Uh, Kra Kraken is oh, actually, Kraken. is actually, yes, yeah, so we had the ongoing joke that I kept saying it that way, because, but actually is an accepted pronunciation. Perfect. So, so that's September. So it's going to be a Kraken pin. Okay, it's going to be yeah. a Kraken pin for the Minnesota yep. man. That's We're in Milwaukee. We are. We are. We're up around where this is acceptable way to say it. This is for September. A little too late to get signed up for that. But October, we're doing the hippo. We already know about that and how long and hard we've fought to have a hippo here in game night. So that's coming. And then for November, we've got Otter Von Bismarck, the Otter. So make sure you do get signed up, starcitygames.com slash game night. Contact your local Star City Games representative, and we can get that stuff taken care of for you. And in December, we'll have a little something special, a little holiday theme there. I think you might be able to guess what that is. But we get ready here for game number two between Sam Black and Andrew Walbers. You mentioned Sam Black and his resume kind of speaking for itself. You know, I've known Sam for a really, really long time. And to see kind of how he's made strides in his magic career, it's been really a lot of fun to watch. You know, kind of starting off as a brewer, not to say that he isn't a brewer anymore because he certainly likes to brew. He is playing Mono White Devotion this weekend after all. But he's really put together a heck of a resume with multiple Pro Tour top eights, that World Championship top four a couple weeks ago. He's become one heck of a player. It's, it's really, really been impressive. Yeah, and it's rare, that you see, it's, it's rare that you see a combination of a top-level deck builder with a top-level pilot, and Sam is one of the few people who can claim both on his resume. Yeah. Loves to brew, loves sacrifice effects. There's a, there's a new blood artist in Battle for Zendikar. So yes. Perhaps. I'm really excited about that card, yeah. actually. So perhaps Sam has found a, a way to get some more wins with that kind of effect. I know that he was the, kind of the designer of the Aristocrats deck a couple of years ago and those sacrificial effects that he loves. But as he's written in articles, He's not drawn to those effects. He's just, if they're powerful in the right format, he will certainly try to play with them, but he's not going to try to force it. And with the Mono White Devotion deck here, he put a lot of time in here. It was certainly worth it as it made him to the top four worlds. Yeah, eventually was defeated by Seth Manfield. Yep. The champ. The champ. That was in the semifinals. You know, watching that match and talking to Sam about it and what he's written about it, it just didn't feel like the matchup was particularly good for him. Uh, the way that Seth's deck lined up against Mono White Devotion was very, very difficult for Sam to beat. And we actually saw Mono White Devotion last weekend as well in Worcester, where it just did not line up very well against really the power level of Obzon, because the deck is, as we know, extremely powerful. Well, and that's just what's interesting to me, is to be willing to not only play a brew, but play a brew that is weak to Obzon in this metagame is, is bold. It appears as though it is weak to Obzon, from what we have seen. But he was able to put together the necessary ones to make the top four at Worlds with the deck. He's up a game right now. And we'll see if he's going to keep his opening hand as Walbers is going to send his back. Looks like Sam is happy, happy. This is the first time I've seen the green-white hardened scales deck in action on coverage here. It is, I think some of the plays that are very impressive. Enough well-timed removal spells does seem like it could be a difficulty for it, though. You know, at that spot, Sam was able to negate the payoff of those hardened scales just by having enough kill spells to deal with. It only took, I believe, two creatures that he had to kill. Yeah, he had two banishing lights for two creatures that were pretty large, and just having those removal spells, you know, that could have been Hero's Downfall or something of that nature. Things that Obzon certainly does to kind of push through the damage. So the creatures are definitely going to be large when, when hardened scales are drawn. The question is, does the opponent have removal or not, I think. Mm -hmm. And he'll have more after sideboard. Yeah. 
I think, and I think that might be kind of a downfall. I think that a lot of people are going to have, they're going to be boarding in more removal against what this deck is trying to do after sideboard. Now, Andrew is bringing some more removal to the table himself. You know, he's bringing in a card like Glare of Heresy for this particular matchup. So it's not like he's not doing anything on his side. Though we will find out here, and this will give us at least a small example of how well this deck mulligans. Because he's starting on six cards right now. And it looks like he will keep. I'll start off with the forest. And there's a Servant of the Scale as we're underway here in game number two. Black with just the planes before passing the turn back. So Servant of the Scale does play well with cards like Avatar of the Resolute, which we see here. He'll yep. be, get to be pumped as a 4-3 because there's one creature with a 1-1 one, one counter in play. This is a card I'm interested in, Avatar of the Resolute. It's, it's one that it's pretty easy to forget about and fly under the radar. Yeah, I, this card is powerful enough for Constructed. You know, as I think Patrick Sullivan say, it's priced to move. Yeah. Now that said, the fact that you're playing a green-green and being interested in a 3-2, those are the, the narrow parts of the card. There aren't that many decks that can actually do that. But this is, this is a powerful magic card if you can find a shell that can support it. Well, here come the beatdowns. So this is an attack here for five. Yeah. Cleverly plays around a Celestial Flare, whether or not Andrew's trying to. Uh, even a Celestial Flare would just move the counter from Servant of the Scale onto Avatar. Sam would can still take five. Yep. Sacrifice of one swept teeth. Looks like basic planes in the land. Wolvers is searched up. So we'll see if he has a play here on his third turn as he's off to a great start here. Black with just a couple of lands to start. Looks like Sam's payoff is in the form of Brahmaz and Wingmate Rock. Well, here's a Mana Gorger Hydra. It's real interesting. Wolvers getting ahead on the board. Now he does have to be concerned about things like tragic arrogance, or it looks like in this situation, Last Breath to take care of the Hydra. Last Breath is actually quite timely here, because it will get a counter, yes, but Last Breath will still be able to take care of it, so it's actually really important that Black has that there, because as I think we saw at the Season 3 Invitational, when we saw Todd Anderson play with Managor or Hydra in combination with Gather Courage, but even sometimes when Todd didn't have Gather Courage, Managor or Hydra would grow out of control very fast. Yeah, absolutely. That you mentioned it, that's one of the few situations that you can Last Breath Managor or Hydra. Uh, speaking of cards that are priced to move, yeah, so we have Knight of the White Orchid here on turn three. Sam's doing that to fetch an extra planes before he makes his land drop so that that triggers. This will be able to search up the new battle lands from Zendikar. Yeah, we are seeing more of these in deck lists yep. for next year's standard. Canopy Vista, Prairie Stream. I, I expect Knight of the White Orchid to see a lot of play moving forward. It's obviously nice in this model white deck. It's providing devotion for Nykthos and some other things here, but this, this one, I have to imagine, is going to be pretty good moving forward. Yeah, I think as long as we are in a place where a 2-2 first strike is something you don't mind casting, this card looks like it'll move. Wolbers, he'll untap and draw. Looks like it'll be a Temple of Plenty to start. Take a look at the top card. That card's going to stay on top. Safe to attack, at least it appears, with the 4-3. Though, as you mentioned, Celestial Flare, a, a bit of a concern. Yeah, he can't just free swing the Servant with it. Now, as yep. it turns out, Sam does not have the Flare, so he takes four more and goes to ten. But what we do know, as I mentioned before, Sam's big payoff here was Wingmate Rock, and he has the fifth land for it. And that's a heck of a payoff in this situation. Now the White Orchid's going to come in. Looks like Wolvers is going to take the two points of damage. He'll fall down to 21. The follow-up is Wingmate Rock that has been raided, so that'll bring a 3-4 along with it. You mentioned this being the payoff. And in what looks to be a pretty removal light matchup, if Wingmate Rock doesn't die, I, I think it's going to be pretty hard for Sam to lose. It's six power and eight toughness worth of flyers. That's very huge. Now, Wilbur's does have plays to make his creatures even larger, but he'll need some of them here. Uh, Sam will really be able to dictate how fast this race goes. There is the token with the Wingmate Rock. Wilbur's may have a card like Dramoka's Command here. It appears that he does. So he's going to kill the actual Wingmate Rock and also give his Avatar of the Resolute a plus one, plus one counter, and move forward accordingly. Take a draw step here, see if maybe he has another removal spell like a Glare of Heresy or another command. Sam still with a lot of cards in hand, forces the, some moves on Andrew's side. There's another Avatar of the Resolute. That's going to come in with two plus one, plus one counters because it checks for each other creature that has a counter mm -hmm. on it. They come better in multiples. Yeah. The one thing that not for I, I, I was going to say the one thing not to forget, but yeah, that one. So that one can't attack. But the one thing you can't forget here is that this thing has reach and trample. Right. Like I think that's actually pretty easy to forget. Like it, it has these keywords the, that you wouldn't really associate it with. The reach is certainly something that it would not initially be on my radar in this situation. Yeah. 
Now, Sam Straw for the turn was a copy of Elspeth, which is fantastic here. However, yeah. he does not have land number six. Yeah, Elspeth will do a great job of winning this game. So I think with that draw, what this means for Sam is that he just needs to survive until Elspeth. Yeah. Looks like his hand may be in Elspeth and another pair of Knight of the White Orchids. What he'll have to decide is whether or not he needs another blocker. Looks like he also has a copy of actually Valorous Stance. Okay. Well, that's quite good in this situation. So if that's the case, you have to like Black's positioning here. He's just going to pass the turn back for now. Yep. And do you see how the Elspeth changed his play style? And there's no attacks on this turn. I think he, know, he knows just how good that Planeswalker is if he can survive to it. Yeah, he's just got to get to it against the mono green deck, which is almost certainly not going to have an answer for it. The and there are plenty to, there's plenty of things to blow yeah. up right now, too. The minus three kills every creature on Andrew's board and none of Sam's. It's yeah. just a blowout. There you see it over on the left. That's Sam's game plan. He needs to survive until it, but he's only at five life. He's sitting on a copy of Valorous Stance in hand. Facing down two lethal Avatar of the Resolutes. Can't forget those Avatars Trample, too. Mm -hmm. Very real in this situation. Don't know if Wolvers has some way to maybe clear the path here a little bit, but Black's cards have lined up pretty well, assuming he does draw land number six for Elspeth. Looks like Wolvers coming to the red zone with both creatures. Looks like before Block, Sam will play Valorous Stance. Yeah, I think if there's some sort of trick to blow that out, Sam's gonna just wants to know about it ahead of time. Yeah, I like a I like a pretty large block here against a trampler. Yeah, you're gonna get a, a token as well. Yeah, everything. Yeah, I I I think this block's appropriate. It, it causes Walbers to have numerous tricks if he has them, to be able to make his avatar live and maybe kill a bunch of stuff. So I I, I like this block a lot by Sam. So. Four toughness on the wingmate rock token, four toughness on Bermaz, one on the cat, two on the knight. That's 11 total. There's no way Avatar is getting through that. And it ends up being a great trade. It's just trades straight with Bermaz and the token. And now Elspeth, while it's not going to come in and destroy everything, Elspeth gets to go into the other mode, which of course is make tokens and be really hard to beat. Yeah, it turns out Sam doesn't actually need the Elspeth there. He can just go for another wingmate rock. Uh, because Andrew had no follow up, that trade was just excellent for Sam. Yep. A rated wingmate rock and a passing of the turn. Walbers with another land. He's going to pass the turn back. Looks like he's flooding a little bit here. Black picks up a planes, which means Elspeth is on now as well. He'll do some attacking for a pretty healthy of mount. He'll trigger the wingmate rock, gain some life here. And it looks like Andrew Walbers will get one more draw step this game. Yeah, and that was really the turning point was that attack where Sam Valor stances and blocks. Walbers had him down to five, needed to find a way to push more damage through, was not able to. And Sam's cards like Wingmate Rock and Elspeth will easily turn the corner for him. And the nice thing here, if you're black too, you know, you might give yourself a little bit of pause about do I want to, you know, put some more things into play. But, you know, if you're playing against it's a green, green white one. deck, yeah. yeah, there's no, there's no reason not to. You can play everything that you want to play. There's not going to be much of a punishment. That's exactly what you see him do. That's exactly, excuse me, what you see him do there with Elspeth. He's able to win this game and match her over Andrew Walbers, two games to zero. Mono White Devotion will take care of Green White Hardened Scales, the deck that Sam had so much success with at the World Championships. We might have him in the sideboard with Ken Crocker a little later today. I know a lot of Mono White Devotion fans out there, not a lot of time left to play the deck, so might want to get your opportunity to do that, but we can't forget that some of these cards, like Knight of the White Orchid, like Archangel of Tithes, they're going to be playable in the next format. So that's mm -hmm. actually that's ex right. that's exciting stuff. Now we, we've we're going to talk.